ever pondered on what ingredients in our food can cause cancer? If your answer is yes, then you're not alone. The unfortunate truth is that some of the everyday foods we consume may contain ingredients that could potentially expose us to the risk of developing cancer. Understanding the relationship between diet and cancer is not just an academic exercise, but an essential step in safeguarding our health. The food we consume is not just about satisfying hunger or tantalizing our taste buds. It's about nourishing our bodies, strengthening our immune system and most importantly, preventing diseases, including cancer. In an era where convenience often trumps health, our supermarkets are brimming with processed foods. These foods, though delicious and easy to prepare, often contain a cocktail of chemicals and additives. Some of these ingredients, unfortunately, have been linked to an increased risk of cancer. But it's not all doom and gloom. By becoming aware of the potential dangers on our plate, we can make informed decisions about our diet. We can choose to consume foods that nourish our bodies and steer clear of those that may harm us. The power of choice is in our hands, or rather, on our forks. In this video, we're going to delve into the world of food and cancer. We're going to explore some of the most common ingredients that have been linked to cancer. We'll be looking at processed meats, alcohol and sugary drinks, to name a few. We'll discuss why these ingredients are considered harmful and how they can potentially contribute to the development of cancer. The journey we're about to embark on may be a little unsettling. It might even change the way you look at your dinner plate. But remember, knowledge is power. By understanding the potential dangers lurking in our food, we can take control of our health and make better dietary choices. You might be surprised by what you discover, so stay tuned. First on our list are processed meats. Let's begin by understanding what exactly processed meats are. These are meats that have been transformed through salting, curing, fermentation, smoking or other processes to enhance flavor or improve preservation. Some examples include hot dogs, ham, sausages, corned beef and beef jerky, as well as canned meat and meat-based preparations and sauces. Now, the link between processed meats and cancer, specifically colorectal cancer, has been a topic of intensive study. The World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified processed meats as a Group 1 carcinogen. In simpler terms, this means there's strong evidence that processed meats can cause cancer in humans. Why is this so? It boils down to the methods used to preserve these meats. Many processed meats are preserved using nitrates and nitrites, which are added to prevent bacterial growth and maintain meat's appealing pink or red color. While these compounds can make our food look more appetizing, they can form harmful substances called nitrosamines when meat is cooked at high temperatures or reacts with stomach acid. Nitrosamines are associated with an increased risk of cancer. But how big is this risk? Well, according to the World Health Organization, Every 50 grams of processed meat consumed daily increases the risk of colorectal cancer by around 18%. To put it into perspective, 50 grams is roughly equivalent to a couple of slices of ham or one hot dog. By now, you might be wondering if you should cut out processed meats from your diet completely. Well, moderation is key. While it's not necessary to completely eliminate processed meats, it's advisable to limit consumption and opt for healthier alternatives whenever possible. Remember, your diet is one factor among many that can influence your risk of cancer. Other lifestyle factors such as physical activity, alcohol consumption, and smoking can also play significant roles in your overall risk. Therefore, it is prudent to limit consumption of processed meats. Next up, we have alcohol. A widely consumed beverage, alcohol has been a part of human culture for thousands of years, yet its consumption is not without risks. One of the most significant of these is the link between alcohol and various types of cancer. Alcohol consumption can lead to several types of cancer, including those of the mouth, throat, esophagus, liver, colon, and even breast. In fact, research has shown that even moderate drinking can increase the risk of breast cancer. But how does this happen? How does a sip of your favorite tipple lead to such a serious disease? Well, it's all down to how alcohol is metabolized in the body. 
when you drink alcohol, it's broken down in the liver into a compound called acetaldehyde. This compound is highly toxic and can damage the DNA in our cells. Over time, this damage can accumulate and lead to mutations, which are the first step towards cancer. Additionally, alcohol can also affect the levels of certain hormones in the body. For instance, it can increase estrogen levels, which in turn can elevate the risk of breast cancer. Moreover, alcohol can work in tandem with other carcinogens like tobacco to amplify their harmful effects. Drinking and smoking together significantly heightens the risk of mouth and throat cancers. The good news, however, is that the risk decreases when alcohol consumption is limited. The less alcohol we consume, the lower the risk of developing these cancers. Now this doesn't mean you must give up on your favorite drink altogether. It's all about balance and moderation. Enjoying a glass of wine with dinner or a beer at a barbecue is not the issue. The problem arises when alcohol consumption becomes frequent and heavy. So here's the takeaway. Too much of anything is bad, and alcohol is no exception. Being aware of the risks and making informed decisions about our alcohol consumption can go a long way in safeguarding our health. So, it's wise to consume alcohol in moderation. Sugar-sweetened beverages also make our list. And here's why. These sweet sips are a significant source of added sugars in our diets, and they come with a hefty side effect, obesity. Obesity is more than just a matter of size. It's a serious health concern that has been directly linked to an increased risk of several types of cancer. The connection between obesity and cancer isn't a mere coincidence. When our bodies store excess fat, it's not just idle, it's active, releasing hormones and inflammatory substances that can alter cell growth and division. These changes can pave the way for cancerous cells to develop and thrive. Let's delve a bit deeper into the sugar aspect. When we consume high amounts of sugar, our bodies have to work overtime to process it. This can lead to chronic inflammation, and inflammation, unfortunately, is like a welcome mat for cancer. It creates an environment where cancer cells feel right at home, encouraging them to grow and multiply. But the sugar story doesn't end with inflammation. High sugar intake can also lead to insulin resistance. Our bodies need insulin to control the level of sugar in our blood. However, when we consistently consume high sugar drinks, our bodies can become resistant to insulin, leading to higher levels of insulin in our blood. This is problematic because insulin, besides its sugar-controlling role, also promotes cell growth. With more insulin in our blood, there's an increased chance of uncontrolled cell growth, a key characteristic of cancer. So, the link from sugary drinks to obesity and from obesity to cancer is clear. But it's also important to remember that the high sugar content in these drinks can directly contribute to cancer development through inflammation and insulin resistance. Therefore, replacing sugary drinks with healthier alternatives can be a good step towards cancer prevention. It's not just about cutting calories, it's about reducing your risk of serious health issues, including cancer. So next time you're thirsty, why not reach for water, unsweetened tea or a homemade smoothie instead? Your body will thank you for it. While these are not the only cancer-causing ingredients, they are some of the most common. It's crucial to remember that what we place on our plates can have a significant impact on our health, particularly when it comes to the risk of developing cancer. In the past few minutes, we've delved into some of the most common culprits found in our food that may increase this risk. Processed meats, for instance, are a staple in many diets, but they often contain nitrates and nitrites, which have been linked to various forms of cancer. Then, we have alcohol, while many of us enjoy a glass of wine or a beer now and then, it's important to be aware that alcohol is a known carcinogen. It can increase the risk of several types of cancer, including breast, mouth, throat, esophagus and liver cancer. We also discussed sugary drinks. These sweet beverages might taste good, but they can lead to weight gain and obesity, which are both risk factors for numerous types of cancer. Now this isn't to say that you need to completely eliminate these foods and drinks from your life, but it's all about balance and moderation. Pairing a balanced, healthy diet with other lifestyle changes, such as regular exercise, adequate sleep, 
and reducing stress can significantly reduce your risk of developing cancer. It's also important to remember that everyone's body is different and what works for one person might not work for another. The key is to listen to your body and find what works best for you. Remember, knowledge is power. By knowing these facts, you can make informed decisions about your diet and potentially lower your risk of developing cancer. The power to make healthier choices lies in your hands. So, let's use this knowledge to our advantage and make every meal count. So, as we wrap up this video, let's keep these points in mind and strive for a healthier lifestyle. Remember, knowledge is power. By knowing these facts, you can make informed decisions about your diet and potentially lower your risk of developing cancer.